My name is Corporal Shannon Loudon of the West Virginia State Police, Internet Crimes Against Children Task Force. About a year ago, I was shot multiple times at close range by a suspected child predator. Lucky to survive, I was not wearing a bullet resistant vest. On any day, over 200,000 law enforcement officers in America are working without protective vest because their department won't buy one or they cannot afford to buy one. Every day, thousands of officers put their lives on the line. Law enforcement officers in your community that don't have this necessary protection. That's why I support the Safe Surfing Foundation efforts to provide ballistic vests to police officers across our nation. Already, the SSF has partnered with Top Line Armor Systems to make these vests at a substantial savings. The Safe Surfing team is working with other police associations to provide these vests for our young men and women who are standing between us and the criminals who would do us harm. We need your lodge, company, community group, or church to buy a vest to be given to police officers or a sheriff's deputy who does not have this protection. Help us protect the protector. The following is my story. Corporal Andrew Shannon Loudon has been with the West Virginia State Police for 10 years. Right now I'm with the Crimes Against Children Unit with the State Police. I handle specialized investigations anywhere from sexual abuse to physical abuse, um, internet crimes with children, child pornography and things of that nature I deal with. On May 3rd of this year, he interviewed a young girl, a victim of abuse, and gathered evidence against a 55-year-old Elkins man. It was about a two-hour interrogation with him um, about the accusations that were made against him but he did agree to give me some, some evidence that I'd asked for. Corporal Loudon said the suspect showed no signs of aggression as they entered the house to get a camera with suspected pornographic evidence. I saw out of the corner of my eye, he ducked into a bedroom that he was standing beside, and I instantly went followed right behind him. He was saying that he was gonna get the camera that I wanted, I'm gonna get the camera for you, and as I was racing towards him, telling him to leave the camera alone. As I got right up to him, he jumped and spun around. And all I could tell you is I knew I'd been shot. Shot in the chest, Corporal Loudon pushed away from the suspect. But on his way out the door, he was shot again, this time in the back. I hit the floor and still in my, my mind, I knew I just had to get out of that house. And luckily, for some reason that day, I left my car running, and I was glad I did because my door was unlocked, my car was running, my radio was booted up, and I was ready to, able to call for help immediately. The man followed Corporal Loudon outside, coldly aimed, and shot once more. He hit the cruiser, but not Corporal Loudon, then ran away. Once I got in my cruiser, I instantly started feeling the real shortness of breath, and everything really started it was like I was looking into the sun. It was so bright, I could hardly keep my eyes open. Meanwhile, at home in Buchanan with their three young daughters, Sabrina Loudon got the call from state police that something terrible had happened. Really, I didn't know anything at that time except for he was shot in the chest and life flighted to Ruby Memorial. Of course, we were all very emotional. So, my oldest daughter told us to all just kneel down and say a prayer which we did. We received a call from Elkins that they were transferring a patient that had sustained a gunshot wound to the chest. For a priority one trauma, that means you have the entire trauma team present, including the most senior operating attending. You have the operating room. They usually send two people in case we need to do something in the emergency department. You have the emergency room physicians and nurses. We have someone from the blood bank, someone from lab. You have the people doing the EKG. You have the techs that are there to do the x-rays. I knew when I got wheeled into, from the helicopter into the, to the hospital, and I remember raising my head up and seeing just lines of people down the hallway, and they were just waiting to go to work, you know, and you could see it on their face. They were ready to do everything they could do. I was very concerned with uh, what we saw on the chest x-ray. There were bullets uh, and bullet fragments in the lung, very, very close to the heart, as well as also going through the chest and probably through the liver and was definitely in the abdomen. As a testament to him and his beliefs, he first wanted to stop and he asked, he said, uh, you know, would it be okay if we, if we 
got the chaplain and we said a little prayer and I didn't tell him this but in the back of my mind I thought yeah that's a super great idea because I don't know how this is gonna go but so it was good for all of us. The gunshots caused injuries to his lungs, abdomen, liver and diaphragm but not to his heart. Actually Dr. Wilson um, couldn't figure out how it missed my heart. Parts of the bullet were so close to the main part of the heart and to the main blood vessels of the heart. It, I was really very, very surprised that he didn't have a, a heart injury along with a lung injury. Um, it's nothing short of miraculous. The surgery was a success. Corporal Loudon recovered in the hospital for five days, then stayed at home to recuperate for nine weeks. You know, I had a lot of people question me, are you going back to work? And, you know, I looked at it like, that guy didn't kill me and I'm not going to let him beat me in any way. And I felt like if I gave up and didn't go back to work and do what I love to do and, and fight to get back to where I was at, then I let him beat me. And I wasn't going to make that, wasn't going to let that happen. So Corporal Loudon is back on the job protecting our children and celebrating everyday life at home with his family. They're grateful to everyone at the John Michael Moore Trauma Center and WVU Healthcare's Ruby Memorial who helped him when he needed it most. Every person showed so much compassion that we dealt with that everyone was wonderful, everyone was great. I wish we could give everybody you know, a big, big hug and just say thank you.